it's a bit of a grey morning here in London. It's a bank holiday weekend, and it's kind of drizzling with rain and a bit London dreary. I haven't yet taken the dog out for a walk. But what I have been doing is thinking about bullion, because as a subject, bullion kind of drives me nuts a little bit. You know, the question is, well, what is what is bullion? What isn't bullion? People hide behind the word bullion so, ma- so many times that they say, well, what do you expect? It's only bullion. So let's look at what bullion actually means. And I guess the best definition of it is something close to spot gold price. So if you're talking about gold bullion, for example... If something was absolutely traded at spot, then it would definitely be bullion. So maybe spot plus 1%, spot plus 2%, depending on the manufacturing cost and the material cost. And uh, and maybe that relates to a gold bar, maybe it relates to some kind of round, or maybe a Krugerrand is bullion. But apart from that, what can one expect? You know, I mean, if you have a Krugerrand at bullion, you buy it for spot plus 2%, can you expect it to be a nice bit of bullion? Um, Does it matter if it's a really nasty bit of bullion that's all worn? You know, what, what is this numismatic premium that we're all talking about all the time? I'll tell you a little story that um, at the beginning of April, I bought a Queen's Beast quarter ounce gold coin directly from Royal Mint Bullion. And it had a little mark on it, so I sent it back. The replacement had pretty much the same little mark on it. It might even have been the same coin, so I sent that back as well. The third replacement had little scratches over the Queen's head. And when I spoke to the Royal Mint Bullion Quality Department, the thing that really struck me was they were basically saying, well, it's just a piece of bullion. What do you expect? And I went a little bit ballistic to the uh, the girl on the phone and said to her, well, if Perf Mint can make lunar gold coins beautifully, with no problems and no issues. Why can't you do that? If the Chinese mint can make their bullion coins absolutely beautiful and with no problems, why can't the royal mint do the same thing? And the fact is that coins that are gold or silver and sold at any kind of premium over a couple of percent they're not really bullion. They're really collector coins or investor's coins. And what can one expect if you're a collector or an investor? And I really think that you should be able to demand a reasonable quality if you are paying a premium. And she did get the point in the end that it wasn't really, you know, that I could expect perfection. And I think that one should expect a really good standard of a coin. I mean, I paid £260 for the coin. Probably spot is round about £210. So that's quite a massive premium over and above spot. What should I get for that premium? I should get some kind of exclusivity. I should get a quality, pretty close to perfect item. Uh, I should get good service, I should get a great design, but we're not really talking about bullion. We're really talking about something which is semi-numismatic. And I think where mints sell items that are semi-numismatic, they really shouldn't hide behind the word bullion, because the word bullion has no real meaning when it comes to these kind of premium items. And that applies to pretty much everything that the main mints are producing. And even things which are bullion strike, one has a right to demand more than pure bullion. 
You know, the only time that I accept that something is pure bullion is if I buy it as effectively its gold weight plus a couple of percent or one percent. But as soon as you get to gold gold weight plus five percent, I then have higher expectations. For example, Hatton Garden Metals started off by selling sovereigns at three percent and above spot. And at that price, with a low spot price, you could make allowances. Then they raised the price to 5% above spot. The sovereigns don't sell quite as well as they used to. And, of course, the expectations of the customers when they're paying 5% are much, much, much bigger. You're effectively doubling the numismatic premium uh, applied to the so-called bullion coins. So your expectation is that you're going to get something which is pretty much perfect and not just bullion. Anyway... I'd be interested in what you guys think about you know, bullion standard and what you expect out of bullion standard and whether you have high expectations or low expectations. So uh, thanks for listening to my bullion ramble and uh, let me know what you guys think about the whole question of you know, bullion and premium and pricing and expectations. And uh, if you haven't already subscribed, then please do subscribe. Uh, There's going to be a good giveaway, hopefully, at 2,000 subscribers. And there'll also be another separate little competition that's coming up, which is relating to the Silver Forum as well, with a separate prize. And uh, so, But I won't really be launching that until it gets to about 1,950, and then I'll be posting some details. So uh, let me know what you think, and uh, thanks a lot, and happy bank holiday, wherever you are.